three pieces of advice that we have found have been useful in the last three or four years of working in the area of healthy communities. First, take a long-term view. Too often we're very focused on short-term results. The tithing fund and all of the infrastructure that we build is going to pay off in the next generation. So take a long-term view. The problems we're facing today, we didn't get into them overnight. We're not going to get out of them overnight. So really take a very multi-year view of where we really want to be in terms of the health status of our community and the health improvement efforts. Second, start small. Don't take on homelessness, poverty, and hunger as your first three initiatives. Target instead on a few families. Take a few square blocks and say, what could we do to get started to improve health status in a few square blocks, 12 families maybe? You'll find that you'll learn more from thinking small and trying some things than you will trying to do something across an entire county. We seldom do initiatives more than one, maybe two, census tracts. Very small, try to drill down and really make a difference in those folks' lives. So again, trying to target when you're first starting off, don't be too broad, don't be too expansive, really learn. And the third is be proactive. Try some new stuff, don't be afraid to fail. You're not going to be good at it. We weren't good at it the first time because basically we're in organizations. We've had 30, 40 years of operating hospitals and physicians' practices and so on, big institutional uh, kinds of organizations. This is grassroots stuff. And so if we just get out and try something, forget the long, protracted planning process. Get out, take a plunge, find out firsthand what's going on, and then let's try something that nobody has thought of before and see if we can make a difference in people's lives. Those three pieces of advice, if put together with enthusiasm, excitement, good leadership, will really go a long way into improving the health status in your healthy community. We found were helpful in building new kinds of partnerships in uh, the effort to improve health and quality of life within communities. Well, first you have to go where the people are. Uh, it's not good enough to hold a meeting in a hospital or in City Hall. Uh, you have to be out in the street, out in the neighborhood, out in communities when the people you want to reach are there. And you have to be prepared to listen to them as much as talking to them about their health. The second thing is that you need to understand that much of this work uh, really is kind of a woman's movement. Uh, the families, the processes that are used, the people who are most engaged in human services and health outreach uh, tend to be nurturers and caregivers in communities. They're often people who don't always stand out as leaders, but they're people who are respected. And we discovered to a very large extent that there was a huge power that we could tap into among retired human services, education, and healthcare professionals in, com in our communities, and particularly among retired women um, who understood the nature of the work that we were trying to accomplish and cared very deeply about our communities. We also discovered that we had to engage uh, economic forces in communities and business forces in communities. No one can tell you uh, as effectively as the local realtor can how healthy a community may be. And why is that? Because the realtor's commissions are based upon his or her ability to say, you know, this is a community where people take care of themselves. It's a community where people feel healthy about their neighborhoods. And so we found that if we worked with local banks, with local realtors, with local small business people, and we asked for their support, in helping to improve the overall health and quality of life in the communities that they were only too willing to do so. And I'd have to say finally that we had to recognize that there was great strength in young people in our communities who often had technological skills that many of the adults didn't have. They had not only the ability to communicate with each other informally in parks, but also they understood how to use the internet a lot better than many of our uh, adults uh, did in communities. 
and we had to work with them in interesting intergenerational settings. Uh, we put them to work in police stations and in health centers, helping us to do community outreach. We paid them small amounts of money, or we made them interns through their school programs and empowered them to work not only as outreach people, but as young parents themselves, often. So we found that uh, in doing outreach, we had to look beyond traditional models of diversity, beyond traditional models of simply providing uh, interpreters or translators to deal with language. We had to bridge cultural gaps that exist across neighborhoods and across age groups and across perceived uh, stereotypes as between the business community and the human services community. And that to the extent that we engaged all of them in the process of building community health, we were uh, really offering what ended up being a much more productive set of partnerships and uh, what uh, proved to be in Boston ultimately a much healthier community. Well, what does this expanded focus on community health mean for the board, and how can board members have a significant impact? There are two primary areas where board members can make a lasting impact on helping their organizations focus their commitment to community health. The first is in helping the organization define its community health commitment through constant or reevaluation of the mission statement. The second activity is where board members can help the organization oversee both individual and collaborative efforts to ensure that these organizations and their initiatives are coordinated and productive and result in community health gain. In looking at the mission statement of an organization, board members can ask a number of fundamental questions. Perhaps one of the most critical questions is, does our mission statement focus on the institution or on the community? Organizations that have mission statements focused on internal goals and objectives and that specify ranges of individual programs and initiatives often miss the opportunity to focus their mission statement on the maintenance and improvement of community health. Having that community health focus provides an important framework for individual programs and initiatives that the organization will ultimately focus on and speaks very strongly to the community about the organization's commitment. Another series of questions that can help board members focus on making their mission statements relevant deals with what are the key health care issues that our community is facing? And is the mission statement that our organization currently has best describing an organization position to deal with the health care needs of the community today and tomorrow? If the major programs and initiatives of the organizations are not relevant to the mission, the board has two choices. It can either revise the mission statement to reflect the programs and activities the organization is currently involved with, because that is the most productive direction for the organization to move in in the future. Or it can pull back on and uh, focus programs and initiatives to make them more mission relevant. 